In the previous lecture, you learned about diagonalization of a matrix. So recall the important results. When you say matrix is diagonalizable, if there exists a non-singular matrix P such that P inverse AP is equal to D, a diagonal matrix. And when you say two matrices A and B are similar, if there exists a non-singular matrix P such that P inverse AP is equal to B, then A and B are similar. Similar matrices have same eigenvalues, but eigenvectors differ by the multiple of matrix P. If X is eigenvector of B, then PX is eigenvector of PX is eigenvector of A. It means if A is similar to a diagonal matrix, then it is diagonalizable. Regarding diagonalization, I told you how to construct P. If you recall, P is constructed by linearly independent eigenvectors of A. X1 to Xn, if A is of order n cross n, then x1 to xn are linearly independent eigenvectors, linearly independent. And I also explained the meaning of linearly independent vectors. So what are linearly independent vectors? C. x1 to xn are linearly independent if a1, x1 plus a2, x2 and so on, a and xn equated to zero implies all these constants are zero. This is the definition of linearly independent vectors. See one example that would clarify you. I'm taking two vectors for a two cross two matrix. One, two, and x2, I am taking 3, 4. Let us see whether these are independent or not. By direct verification, you are seeing that these are not multiple of each other. These are not, in, uh, these are not multiple of each other. That means these are independent. But how to do using this? So multiply first vector by a1 and second vector by a2. Put it equal to zero. Remember that these are column matrices, so equal to zero means zero vector. Okay, means the column matrix with zero entries. So what do you get from it? A1 plus 3A2, if you add these to the first two column matrices, and then 2A1 plus 4A2 equal to zero, zero. So you are left with two equations in two variables. It is homogeneous system, you understand. It is homogeneous system in A1 and A2. How you solve homogeneous system? Already you have done this kind of problems. For homogeneous system, in fact, you can directly also assess what is going to happen. Uh, what is the matrix here? 1, 3, 2, 4. Calculate its determinant. That will directly give you an idea whether it has a trivial solution or some non-trivial solution also. So if I calculate its determinant, I get 1, 3, 2, 4. That means 4 minus 6 minus 2, non-zero. If determinant is non-zero for the homogeneous system Ax equal to 0, what do you say about x? X has only one solution. And what is X here? The column matrix A1, A2. Okay, so this has only one solution, 0, 0. Is it clear? 
So this way you can show the vectors are linearly independent. Now you understand this definition that I told you earlier. If you put the linear combination of the vectors equal to zero, and if you get all these constants equal to zero, that means the vectors are linearly independent. See another example. This time I'm taking two vectors, one, two, and two, four. Check whether these are linearly dependent or independent by using the definition. So A1 into X1, that means A1 into 1, 2, A2 into 2, 4. See what do you get this time? Which two equations you get? You get A1 plus 2A2 equal to 0. Another equation is 2A1 plus 4A2 equal to 0. What is the system of what is the metric system in this case? 1, 2, 2, 4, A1, A2 equal to 0, 0. This is the homogeneous system in matrix form. So how to solve it? Make 0 here. Or you could calculate determinant also, whatever way you decide. So uh, which operation will work to make 0 here? R2 is replaced by R2 minus 2R1. And you see second row completely becomes 0. That means you are left with only you are left with only one equation. A1 plus 2A2 equal to 0. So do you think that it has only one solution or infinitely many solutions? Infinitely many. It means this combination is zero for some non-zero values of A1, A2 also, right? So you are not getting only trivial solution, you are getting other solutions also. So in this case, it is depend the vectors are dependent. Is this clear? Because the system has infinitely many, so only one equation in two variables. You understand there are infinitely many solutions. It means there exist non-trivial solutions also. Non-trivial solution means either A1 or A2 at least is zero, at least is non-zero, such that this combination gives you zero. And one combination you can find easily. For example, if you choose A1 equal to minus two, A2 equal to one, then this combination gives you zero, zero. So in this case, the vectors are linearly dependent. So same thing you can do for 3 cross 3 and more vectors. Understood the idea of linearly dependent and independent vectors? Okay. Now let us go back to our main discussion. I was saying that a matrix is diagonalizable if it is similar to a diagonal matrix, it means you can find a matrix P such that P inverse AP equal to diagonal matrix. How to construct P? First find eigenvalues of A and then find its eigenvectors. If A has N linearly independent eigenvectors, N linearly independent eigenvectors, say X1 to X, condition is these should be linearly independent. Then, this P can diagonalize A. And at the diagonal basis, what do you get? Exactly the eigenvalues of A. Right? So P is constructed by eigenvectors of A. Condition is that the eigenvectors should be linearly independent. If these are independent, then matrix is diagonalizable. And in the diagonalized form, at the diagonal places, we have exactly the eigenvalues of A. So these things we did in the previous lecture. And one more thing, I told you the criteria for existence of N linearly independent eigenvectors. What is that? If the N eigenvalues are different, N eigenvalues are different then you will definitely get n linearly independent eigenvectors. 
okay and linearly independent eigen vectors if the n eigen values of the matrix are different means not repeating in that case you will definitely get n linearly independent eigen vectors so what does that mean it means if there exist n different eigen values you can directly say the matrix is diagonalizing but if some eigen values are repeating still there may exist n linearly independent eigen vectors may not exist that may also happen okay those things we discussed in the previous lecture let us see one example for the construction of p suppose a is 12 minus 51 2 minus 11 first find its eigen values and then eigen vectors already we have done this example in the previous lectures eigen values in this case are 6 comma minus 5 and eigen vectors are corresponding to 6 you get 17 2 and corresponding to minus 5 it is 3 1 because the eigen values are different so you are getting two linearly independent eigen vectors so what is what is p in this case can you write p in this case yourself x1 x2 x1 is 17 2 x2 is 3 1 so if you take this p and solve p inverse ap what will you get if you consider p constructed by the eigen vectors of a then what do you get for p inverse ap the diagonal matrix where diagonal places would exactly be minus means diagonal entries would be 6 and minus 5 you can verify it yourself okay you can verify it so calculation of eigen values and eigen vectors you already know further in verification what do you know need p you have written p inverse you have to find from the methods that you learned in 12th standard okay you know how to find inverse of a matrix after that multiply these three matrices p inverse a and p you will get this one this matrix okay so this kind of problems you can do easily matter of calculation only likewise from this matrix if i ask you find a cube without multiplying a three times so what will you write p p d cube p inverse and what is p already have written here d means this matrix the matrix uh, with the diagonal entries as eigen values of a so put your p here then d cube means 6 cube 0 0 5 cube minus 5 whole cube into p inverse multiply these three matrices see what are you get that would be same as if you multiply a three times okay so this kind of problems you can do easily of course you should be good at calculation in matrices but you understand the idea right now today we will do something very important 
diagonalization of a real symmetric matrix. See all the things step by step, you will understand. Diagonalization of a real symmetric matrix. First of all, tell me what is a symmetric matrix? A matrix A is symmetric if its transpose is equal to itself, correct? A matrix A is symmetric if its transpose is equal to itself. You know this. If X is a vector, I'm telling you a couple of, I mean, some definitions and some results. Okay, those we will need. So symmetric matrix you understand. Second, suppose X is a vector with entries X1 to Xn. Then it's norm, norm of X, denoted by this symbol, is defined as x1 square plus x2 square plus and so on xn square. It's same as magnitude of a vector, you recall? If you know the components of a vector, how do you find how do you find magnitude? Same formula. So norm is nothing but you can say magnitude of the vector. Okay. What is normalization of X? Normalization means finding a unit vector. Normalization means X divided by its norm. If you divide a vector, or you can say you multiply the vector by 1 over norm X, then you get unit vector. See one example. For example, I consider X equal to 1, 2. So what is norm X? First find norm X. If x is 1, 2, what is norm of x by this definition? Square root of 5? Yes. 1 square plus 2 square square. And what is x divided by norm of x? Multiply both the components 1 and 2 by 1 over root 5. So you get 1 over root 5, 2 over root 5. You understand that norm of this whole, x over norm of x, norm of this whole would be equal to if you square and sum both, you get 1, isn't it? After that, take square root. So it's just like you are finding unit vector, okay? Just I'm using different symbols, norm. Calling magnitude as norm. Now, next very important definition, orthogonal vectors. Two vectors are orthogonal if their dot product is zero. But first I should define dot product. Let us take it like this. Suppose x is x1 to xn and y is y1 to yn. dot product can also be written as x transpose y dot is symbol but here is the actual multiplication of the matrices because you have to make it row the first matrix row by column you know you multiply two matrices 
So x transpose y, what is the uh, output? x1, y1 plus x2, y2 and so on, x and y. You do the same thing in dot product, right? You multiply the corresponding components and add. Am I right? Here just you are seeing the things in matrix symbol. That's it. So let's take the same symbols. X and Y are orthogonal if X dot Y is equal to zero. Just like you take perpendicular vectors. If the dot product is zero, you say that the vectors are perpendicular, isn't it? So two vectors, X and Y are orthogonal if their dot product is zero. Further, if norm X is one, suppose, and norm Y is also one, in addition to the first condition, then X, Y are called orthonormal vectors orthonormal there is another term orthonormal orthogonal means simply their dot product is zero orthonormal means dot product is zero as well as their individual norms are one their magnitudes are one Clear the two definitions. See with example now. Suppose I choose x equal to 1, 2 and y equal to minus 2, 1. What is the dot product of the two? 0 because just directly you have to dot product means x transpose y. What is transpose here? The row, row matrix 1, 2 multiplied with minus 2, 1. So if you multiply, what do you get? Min minus 2 plus 2. So you get 0. Correct? So these two vectors are orthogonal because their dot product is zero. Are these orthonormal also? Yes or no? No, because norm of one, norm of x is not one. So can I make these orthonormal? Can I make this orthonormal? Yes. You can divide by its norm. So what do you get? 1 by root 5, 2 over root 5, and then y over norm y. So you get minus 2 over root 5. No, its norm is also root 5, 1 over root 5. Now the, these new vectors, you can name something else if you like. Okay, say Z, W. Now these new vectors Z and W are orthogonal of course. And these are orthonormal also. I have divided by norm so that these become, these become normalized. Or you can say their magnitude becomes 1. Now I can say Z and W are orthonormal. I can use the word orthonormal because their norms are one. But earlier, X, Y are orthogonal but not orthonormal. I think you understand this point. It's simple. Okay. All right. So same is true for more number of vectors. If you are given three vectors, you will say those are orthogonal if they are mutually orthogonal in pairs. Orthonormal if they are mutually orthonormal in pairs. Okay. So same definition can be generalized to any number of vectors.
next a matrix a matrix is orthogonal now i'm talking about a matrix a matrix is orthogonal if its column vectors or simply columns are orthogonal similarly a matrix is orthonormal if its columns are orthonormal if column vectors of a matrix are orthogonal the matrix is orthogonal not this definition so if i write a matrix say a equal to 1 to minus 2 1 can i say it is orthogonal matrix yes why because it's two columns 1 2 and minus 2 1 are orthogonal so a is orthogonal matrix what about this matrix 1 over root 5 minus 2 over root 5 2 over root 5 1 over root 5 what is it orthogonal or orthonormal orthonormal is always orthogonal that's true but it is orthonormal also orthonormal because the its column vectors are orthonormal clear there is a very important property in an orthonormal matrix what is that if a matrix p is orthonormal orthonormal if a matrix p is orthonormal then it can be proved that its inverse is equal to its transpose this is a useful property we will not prove it just note it down if a matrix p is orthonormal then its inverse is equal to its transpose so in this example b inverse would be equal to b transpose that is very good you need not to find inverse just transpose will work for you in case the matrix is orthonormal and checking orthonormal is very easy checking orthonormal is very easy just you have to multiply the columns in pairs and if you are getting zero each time the, you can easily see whether the matrix is ortho, orthogonal and ortho normal also just to divide by the norm okay so this is very good property just transpose will work for the inverse in case of orthonormal all right one more point then i will come back to symmetric matrix there is a process called gram summit process summit s c h gram summit process what is it if you are given any set of set of linearly independent vectors suppose this is linearly independent set of vectors then from this we can construct orthonormal set orthogonal not orthonormal because once you have orthogonal you can convert that to orthonormal easily from a given linear independent set of vectors using gram summit process you can construct y1 to yn a new set of vectors which is orthogonal 
very useful process. You will see that. How? Y1 is simply given by X1. Y2 is given by X2 minus X2 dot Y1 into Y1 divided by norm Y1 square. Y3 is given by X3 minus X3 dot Y1 into Y1 divided by norm Y1 square minus X3 dot Y2 into Y2 divided by norm Y2 square. Now you understand the sequence, what's going on. Using this pattern, you can construct orthogonal vectors. This is graph summit process. Again, I repeat, X1 to Xn is the given linear independent set of vectors. It is given to you. But in this set, I'm not sure whether the vectors are orthogonal or not. So we can construct a new set of vectors from this given set of linearly independent vectors, which, which would be orthogonal. Okay, so how to do that? The new set of vectors is y1 to yn. So how to obtain y1, y2, y3, etc. This process is called gram summit process of orthogonalization. So y1, take y1 simply x1, y2 as x2 minus x2 dot, dot you understand dot product, into y1 over norm y1 square. Okay. Then y3, x3 minus x3 dot y1 over norm y1 square minus, you understand, it, it's just a, uh, means sequential thing. You can similarly write y4, y5, etc. After this, it is clear these five points, or I should go back to first, second, third, fourth, five. Okay. Now, a very important result, very, very important result for symmetric matrices. If A is a real symmetric matrix, A is a real symmetric matrix. Real, you understand? All entries are real. We are not dealing with complex case. A is a real symmetric matrix of order n cross n. Please see these results very, very carefully. Very interesting results. First, A has, A has n real eigenvalues, real eigenvalues. If you are given a real symmetric matrix, real eigenvalues are guaranteed. Second, A has n linearly independent eigenvectors. This is also guaranteed. Very good. In case of real symmetric matrix, n real eigenvalues are guaranteed, n linearly independent eigenvectors are guaranteed. What does that mean? A is always diagonalizable. Because if you are able to get n linearly independent eigenvectors, A is diagonalizable. So what do you understand from this? A real symmetric matrix is always diagonalizable. A real symmetric matrix is always diagonalizable. Next is again very, very interesting. Eigen vectors of A corresponding to different eigenvalues, corresponding to different eigenvalues. of A are mutually orthogonal. Mutually orthogonal. This is also guaranteed. In case 
of real symmetric matrix, the eigenvectors that you will get corresponding to different eigenvalues. I'm not talking about repeated eigenvalue. I'm saying different eigenvalues. The corresponding eigenvectors, you will see that those are mutually orthogonal. One more property about real symmetric matrices. There exists an orthonormal set. In case of real symmetric matrix, you can always construct orthonormal matrix. Orthonormal matrix P such that P inverse AP is equal to a diagonal matrix where diagonal matrix are exactly where the diagonal matrix is exactly carrying the diagonal entries as eigenvalues of A and P carries the linearly independent eigenvectors of A. Look at these five properties again. Very, very useful properties regarding real symmetric matrix. See, if A is a real symmetric matrix, it always has n real eigenvalues. You will never get complex eigenvalues corresponding to a symmetric matrix. Second, A has n linearly independent eigenvectors. This is also guaranteed. Third, is clear from the first two. In fact, the second one, if A has n linearly independent eigenvectors, then naturally it is diagonalizable. Okay. Fourth, Orthogonality is also connected with the real symmetric matrix. What is that? Corresponding to different eigenvalues, the eigenvectors are orthogonal. Fifth, you can always obtain orthonormal matrix P from the eigenvectors of A. I will tell you with one example, such that it diagonalizes A and diagonal entries are eigenvalues of A. Clear? We will do a problem, but before that, accept these five results regarding real symmetric matrix. Okay, we don't need the proof at the moment. Just accept these results. These can be proved. Let's see an example. This example is very important for you because this example will explain you all the properties. Write it and solve together with me. Determine an orthonormal matrix P. Determine an orthogonal matrix, orthonormal matrix. It's not orthogonal. Determine an orthonormal matrix P that diagonalizes the matrix A equal to 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. This example will tell you all the properties very clearly. So first find its eigenvalues. This part you will do yourself. You know how to find eigenvalues. If you can tell me, it's very good. What are eigenvalues of this matrix? You have to do the calculations, of course. Eigenvalues of this matrix are No, 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 these are not 0, 0, 0. The, it, it's not a diagonal matrix. You have to do the calculations. Okay, I believe you will do it yourself. I focus on the main points. Its eigenvalues are minus 1, minus 1, and 2. You can verify it yourself later. Eigenvalue, uh, these eigenvectors are, eigenvectors are corresponding to minus one. These are 
minus one one zero because minus one is repeating. Corresponding to minus one, you get two linearly independent eigenvectors. I'm writing those. X one is minus one one zero, and X two is minus one zero one. You can verify this. Corresponding to lambda equal to two, you have third eigenvector. That is one one one. Now, see the first property. A has n real eigenvalues. A is three cross three here. You are getting three real eigenvalues. Correct. Look at the second property. A has n linearly independent eigenvectors. Yes, you have three linearly independent eigenvectors. You can check. Third property: A is diagonalizable. Diagonalizable. Of course, you know that if you have uh, number of independent eigenvectors equal to the order of the matrix, then means it is three cross three. You are getting three linearly independent eigenvectors, so it is diagonalizable. It's fine. Verify the fourth one. Eigenvalues of A corresponding to different eigenvalues. Eigenvectors of A corresponding to different eigenvalues of A are mutually orthogonal. Let us check this point. Corresponding to different. These two are corresponding to lambda equal to minus one, and this is corresponding to lambda equal to two. Can you check x one dot x three and x two dot x three? What are you getting? Zero. That means these are orthogonal as expected. But but x one dot x two is not zero. What is x one dot x two? By the way, product of these two. It is one zero zero non zero. It is not equal to zero. No, I should write it as a number minus one into minus one plus one. This is non zero, but it is, it is corresponding to uh, the repeated eigenvalue. As I said earlier, corresponding to repeated, it is not guaranteed that those are mutually orthogonal. But corresponding to different eigenvalues, you are saying. The eigenvectors are orthogonal, correct? Now, how can you construct? Because now your job is to construct P, which is orthonormal. But if you use x one, x two, x three, this is not orthonormal. X one is orthogonal to X three, fine. X two is also orthogonal to X three, fine. But X one, X two are not orthogonal to each other. So now you need to use Gram summit process to construct orthogonal vectors from X one and X two. So first write Y one. What is Y one? X one is minus one one zero. So take it as it is. Y one is x one in the Gram summit process. Take x one as it is. It is minus one one zero. How to construct y two? X two minus x two dot y one into y one divided by norm of y one. Just do this calculation yourself. Tell me what is the vector you are getting? X two is given to you here minus one zero one minus one zero one. This is X two minus X two dot Y one means what? Y one is already X one, so X two dot Y one X two is here. Okay, I'm writing both here. Minus one zero one. This is x two, and who dot y one? Y one means minus one one zero. This dot product you need to consider. Then y one. Y one means the vector again minus one one zero divided by its norm. Norm means square root of two. Okay. Further calculation, I think you can do comfortably. See what do you get? 
do you get minus 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 and 1 confirm this to me is this y2 correct all right so now what is your orthogonal set y1 y2 from x1 x2 you constructed y1 y2 which are orthogonal and x3 was already orthogonal so this set is certainly orthogonal okay from this you need to write orthonormal set now for orthonormal it's very simple divide every vector by its norm y2 divided by norm y2 by the way check whether you have obtained y1 dot y2 0 or not because you constructed orthogonal set so you should check also just to be sure y1 is minus 1 1 0 dot if you are not writing dot then uh, write it in transposed form okay dot minus uh, what is y2 minus 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 1 do you get 0 I have not converted x3 to y3. The reason is that x3 is corresponding to a uh, different uh, eigenvalue. It is or already orthogonal to x1, x2. So it will be orthogonal to y1, y2 also. So x3 divided by norm of x3. So y1 and y2 are orthogonal, right? We have verified it. I'm not writing root two anywhere. It is this this root two is norm of y one. Okay, this calculation is correct or not? Tell me. y1 y2 are correct or not yes y1 dot y2 is 0 correct okay so y1 y2 are orthogonal and y1 y2 are all or also orthogonal to x3 you can check if you like okay so i need not to construct y3 so this is my orthogonal set because all are orthogonal and every vector I have divided by norm, now it is orthonormal. Okay. So this is my P. If you use this P and simplify P inverse AP, you can calculate Y1 by norm, Y1, Y2 by norm, Y2. You can write this matrix easily. What you are supposed to get, can you tell me, using the result 5? P inverse AP should be equal to the diagonal matrix. And at diagonal places exactly, you will get eigenvalues of the matrix. So what are eigenvalues in this case? Minus 1, minus 1 and 2. So you will get this output. You can check it yourself. Okay, so full steps are written in the lecture notes. You can see there this example is solved in the notes. But I have explained you the procedure how to do, do it. This example explains all these five properties of symmetric matrix. So do this example carefully. This example also explains explains you uh, that how to use this uh, gram summit process for constructing an orthogonal set okay
this would be very useful when you go for quadratic forms let me discuss one more topic it is very short one quadratic form Suppose I take a two cross two matrix just for uh, understanding. One, two, two, three. X I choose a vector with two entries x one x two. Can you simplify x transpose a x? X transpose means x one x two. A as it is. One, two, two, three, and x means the column matrix x one, x two. Can you multiply and tell me what do you get? You can multiply row by column. Multiply these two first, or the latter two first. It's up to you. Tell me the output. If you multiply first two, what do you get? X one plus two x two. Row by column, you know the product of matrices. Then two x one plus three x two. X one, X two, as it is. Next, X one plus two X two into X one. Now multiply this by this. Plus two X one plus three X two into X two. Simplify it. See what do you get? You get x one square plus four x one x two plus three x two square. Am I right? X one square plus four x one x two plus three x two square. It is a polynomial. Second degree polynomial in x one x two in two variables. In one variable, if you say polynomial carrying only second degree term, it is x square, but it is in two variables. Okay, this is a quadratic form. I can define. Quadratic form in any number of variables. Okay. For example, if you have three variables, I'm writing a matrix. This time you will do the calculation yourself. One, two, minus one, two, three, one, minus one, one, four. If I ask you to do the calculation using x one, x two, x three. For x transpose a x, this time you will get x one square plus three x two square plus four x three square plus four x one x two minus two x one x three plus two x two x three. You can check it later. But what are you saying? All the terms are in square or the cross product terms. X one x two, x one x three, x two. So it is again a second degree polynomial. In three variables, x one, x two, x three. So this is this is a homogeneous expression, okay, of second degree in x in three variables. This is called a quadratic form. This is in three variables. In earlier example, it is in two variables. So hope you understand the meaning of quadratic form and it and its matrix form. Okay.
an expression of the form x transpose ax is called a quadratic form x a if a is n cross n matrix then x is a column vector with n variables so this is a quadratic form from the about to example to understand it well now what is the connection of this quadratic form with the things that we discussed earlier that is beautiful let me tell you see this thing carefully suppose you are given a quadratic form x transpose ax and a is a real symmetric matrix a is a real symmetric matrix in quadratic form i can choose a symmetric matrix let's say it is given to you it is a symmetric matrix real symmetric matrix and the quadratic form is x transpose ax in this quadratic form i am using a transformation now say x equal to py so what is the transformed form now y is a new vector with n variables y1 to yn here x is a column vector with the variables x1 to xn so i'm changing this quadratic form to a new form using this transformation what is my p p is the orthonormal matrix that diagonalizes a suppose i'm choosing that p what happens here what i'm saying i'm choosing p such that p inverse ap is a diagonal matrix already we have done in the previous example you know what is p for the real symmetric matrix the orthonormal matrix that diagonalizes it okay so let's use it this transformation x equal to py here what do we get py transpose times a times py what happens after this y transpose p transpose ap p transpose you know this result from matrices if you, there is a product of matrices you are taking transpose order changes b transpose a transpose i am using it so it becomes y transpose p transpose times a p y now recall that result i told you for orthonormal matrix p inverse is same as its transpose in today's lecture i have told you for orthonormal matrix p the inverse is same as its transpose so i can write here here p inverse but what is p inverse p inverse ap diagonal matrix diagonal matrix and this diagonal matrix carries only the eigen values of eigen values of a d carries d is a diagonal matrix carrying the eigen values lambda 1 to lambda n of a so what is the output of this lambda 1 y1 square lambda 2 y2 square you can multiply and see yourself and so on lambda and y m square very interesting all cross product terms are gone there is no y1 y2 or y2 y3 because it is diagonal in this calculation for example in this matrix if i choose 0 0 here you know what will be the output you can see from here x1 square plus 3 x3 square correct okay so same way because it is diagonal so you will you are left with this form 
this is called canonical form of the quadratic form given quadratic form so thing is that using the transformation x equal to py you can convert you can convert the quadratic form to the canonical form canonical form means that carries only the square terms no cross terms you can also call this thing as diagonalization of the quadratic form because now it is carrying only let me write it in matrix form in matrix form how it looks like y1 to yn y transpose diagonal means lambda 1 to 0 lambda 1 0 0 and so on 0 0, 0 lambda 2 and so on 0 then final row 0 0 and so on lambda n. into y1 to yn it's like this so this matrix is the diagonal matrix that carries exactly the eigen values of a so you see this quadratic form is related to the eigen values you can always convert a quadratic form into the canonical form using this transformation x equal to py and what is p the orthonormal matrix obtained using the eigen vectors of a already we have done it in the previous example so you see the connection between different things quadratic forms are related to eigen vectors and eigen values of the matrix is it clear if you understand this then you can do this problem yourself even you don't need my help i'm writing this problem a quadratic form is given like x1 square minus x3 square minus 4x1 x2 plus 4x2 x3 in polynomial form it is given can you write it in matrix form first thing means in the form x transpose ax can you write it yourself x1 x2 x3 here the 3 cross 3 matrix and then x1 x2 x3 1 minus 2 0 check it yourself how does it happen minus 2 0 2 Zero two minus one. It is symmetric, so minus two minus two. You see, this corresponds to x one, so x one x two cross term, so that you can get minus four times x one x two. Same way you can understand here. There is no cross term for for x two x three x two x three x one x two x one x three is not there. That's why you are getting zero zero here. Okay, at diagonal places because coefficient of x one square is one and x three square is minus one, and there is no x two square. That's why you are seeing zero here. So it's very easy to write with a real symmetric matrix. Is it clear? from this polynomial means this quadratic form i have written it in matrix form is it clear or not you multiply back you will get this expression so this is your a here this matrix we have to write it symmetric okay we can const construct it non symmetric also but we will consider symmetric only so that we can do find canonical form you know the we have very good results related to symmetric form okay now if i ask you diagonalize it so that i don't have these cross terms so what to do for this first you need to find eigen values of a i'm writing eigen values please do this yourself you will find 0 minus 3 3 all are different 
so this time constructing orthonormal matrix is easy why because if all are different then you will get three linearly independent eigen vectors and those will be orthogonal also okay so i'm writing the set directly you have to check it yourself it is 2 over 3 1 over 3 1 over 3 then uh, minus 1 over 3 minus 2 over 3 2 over 3 Minus two over three, two over three, one over three. Check it when you get time. It's not urgent at the moment. You will get these three vectors as orthonormal vectors corresponding to these three eigenvalues. Now, using this p, if you use the transformation x equal to p y, and you find the new quadratic form. in terms of y means y transpose dy what will you get y1 y2 y3 multiply by the diagonal matrix with diagonal entries exactly as 0 minus 3 3 so 0 0 0 0 3 0 0 0 3 y means y1 y2 y3 if you simplify what do you get you get minus 3 y2 square plus 3 y3 square you you can see here there are no y1 y2 or y2 y3 so this is canonical form of the given quadratic form or you can say diagonalized form of the quadratic form. so this is another example that will help you to understand those five results that i told you regarding the symmetric matrix now you should understand the relation the interplay between different concepts that is going on first you learn about eigen values and eigen vectors that then you learn about uh, the diagonalization of a matrix then you found there how eigen values and eigen vectors are connected Uh, with the diagonalization of the matrix after that today in today's lecture you have learned about some very useful properties of symmetric matrix then you see that symmetric matrix is connected with the quadratic form the matrix that appears in quadratic form is a real symmetric matrix so we can use this orthonormal uh, matrix related to symmetric matrix to diagonalize it directly using the transformation x equal to py okay using x equal to py you are getting this form right as i explained earlier okay so today you have learned very very important things and very useful things if something is not clear watch this lecture again that will help you still something is not clear i will explain you in the next lecture is that okay okay thank you we will meet in the next lecture